The saga continues. Shouting Sub Zero here, and welcome to another episode of Eating with Zero. I'm not in the mood to eat anything hot or drink anything warm, so to celebrate, I got some ice cream. And no, I didn't get this from Mr. Softy. For some odd reason, hasn't been around the past couple of days, which is odd. Anyone living in New York City already knows who Mr. Softy is. He's basically the ice cream man of the hood. And normally, when you hear his theme song playing, you know it's gonna be some nice weather out there. Come on, you know that was accurate. In terms of what I'm drinking, I'm drinking some cold coffee. I've been doing something a little different with how I intake coffee. I'm not putting any coffee creamer, I'm not putting any milk, I'm not putting any sugar. I'm just drinking black coffee, straight up, that's it. But I know you're not here to listen to what I'm eating or even look at what I'm eating. Some of you are, but not all of you. You wanna know what the hell is wrong with me. So I made this post last week. Uh, I was in a bad place. I woke up and I just was not feeling everything in my life. And the feeling of regret came back. The same feeling that I had when I worked in my shitty job little under a year ago. Well, I woke up Monday morning and I almost called out. Now, I got really sick about a month ago, right? It was really bad, actually. Uh, I caught some sort of viral infection where I was coughing blood. It was just like mucus all over. I was sleeping like, I was sleeping like 16 hours of the day. It was pretty bad. I lost a week of pay, right? After I got sick, you know, a month ago, I woke up this past Monday. I just was not feeling it. Like I woke up, you know, the alarm really bothered me. The one that bothers me more than the buzzing sound is this one. I hate that sound so much, it makes me want to pierce a knife in someone's throat. That's how bad it is, okay? But that's how much I fucking hate that sound. So I woke up that morning and I heard that sound echoing through my entire life. And I just did not want to go to work. I thought I was out of this place. I thought that the feeling that I had from leaving my last job went away. That feeling of just not, not being where you want to be. The routine that I was following started to get to me. Waking up at 6.30 in the morning, getting ready, leaving at 7.15, taking the fucking train, getting to work by 9, work until 6.00 take the train, get home by 7.30, hang out for maybe an hour, get my food ready, get my clothes ready, get my son in bed and go to sleep. Like I'm, I'm being that serious, that's literally my entire day. Like I don't really have time to play games as much as I wanted to anymore. You know, I start to think about it. I'm like, I think I'm gonna quit. I think I'm gonna fucking quit. Like I don't think, I don't think this job is for me. I barely see my son. I don't get to use my car very much. The only time I get to use my car is when I'm moving it to, pre to prevent getting a ticket in the morning. Also, on the weekend, that's about it. I don't get to drive my car on the weekday at all. I'm paying all of this insurance. And, you know, I'm traveling about two hours a day. Actually, it's more than that. It's, it's, it's about an hour and a half to go and an hour and a half to come back. So that's a lot of travel time. I'm really getting sick of it. I really don't like it. Crap. Oh man, what happened? Excuse that eating marathon. <laughs> so that morning, 
you know, I was on the train and, I, and I'm like, yo, I, I really don't want to go in right now. Like, I got to go home. Like, I just, I need a sign. I need a sign to go home. My conscience is telling me, yo, you can't call out. You were sick and you were out of work for an entire week and lost that entire week of pay. And you're recovering from that real quick. So I went to work that Thursday, right before Good Friday. I was already sick. So I was sick Wednesday and Thursday. Thursday is when it reached its peak. Coughing like crazy. I was coughing blood. I was sweating bullets. It was insane, right? I caught this virus. It was really bad. You know, uh, my supervisor is like, yo, you're going to be okay. And, and she's like, just don't, don't, don't answer the phone. You know, if someone calls your phone, don't answer it. Don't worry about it. We got it. I'm like, okay. Now, I don't take many calls. I take about maybe five or six if it's busy. So I'm like, okay, thanks. And I have like this raspy Kermit the Frog voice. It's really bad. I had off Good Friday. Cough and blood. I was actually crying. I was in tears. I was like, because <laughs> every time I tried coughing, it was like, it was actually, it felt like I had a big dick in my throat. That's how I felt like. It was really bad, bro. I had like this hard cock, a veiny cock in my throat. And every time I coughed, it was like getting bigger and bigger. It was insane. And I'm just like, I'm like, yo, this is so every time I coughed, I felt like I had to put my heart and soul into it. It was always blood, a lot of like phlegm, brown phlegm. It was disgusting. I had a headache, I had a fever, sweating bullets constantly sleeping i couldn't eat anything right you know i was like okay i should be good by monday sunday came and i was like yo i don't think i could come in on monday but i'm not gonna get paid bro my wife is like yo just see how you feel in the morning so i woke up that morning and i was like yo i can't do this so i called my supervisor i'm like hey i'm not i'm not gonna come in so my voice is still like a frog i still sound like kermit she's like you think you're gonna come in tomorrow and i was like I, th I think I think I am and she hears it in my voice that it's probably not gonna happen I hang up I call out again Tuesday and I go hey um, I feel better now at this point I don't sound like Kermit the Frog I sound pretty decent you know I'm, I'm a little off but you can hear that I feel I, f I probably feel better I go hey I'm not coming in today Tuesday but I'm gonna come in Wednesday she's like okay I I'll see you tomorrow then so I go to work Wednesday right I wake up that morning and I'm just like sweating drenched and i'm like well i feel a lot better though felt weak though i felt like physically weak right it's pretty cold outside so i'm like okay let me let me bundle up and i'll go to work so i did the i did the 15 minute walk to you know from the from the train from where i live to the train station it took me like 25 minutes bro i'm walking and i'm sweating i'm sweating and i'm wearing a button-up shirt you know like a collar shirt wear my my uh my slacks and my shoes or my boots so i'm walking i'm walking and i'm like fuck man i should have called out i get to the train station and i'm just sweating bullets bro i'm like i'm looking at everyone thinking maybe it's not just me maybe maybe it's like hot and cold right maybe it's some katy perry up in here right like i'm like no one is sweating everyone's freezing like oh the fuck it's cold and my ass is sweating bullets right and i'm like Yo, I'm gonna die today. I'm still coughing. I'm coughing a lot, right? And you know, I'm coughing. There's still blood, man. I'm like, yo, am I gonna die? Am I gonna die? Like, like, see, this happened to me years ago. Like in, um, like in, I think it was like 2010. I got really sick, and they they uh, hospitalized me because they thought that I had tuberculosis because of the amount of blood that I was coughing. And I was like, I don't got tuberculosis, bro. I had bronchitis. This shit probably got torn up in my throat. You get me? So that's what ended up happening. They put some dick looking thing in my throat with a camera. They were like spinning it around and shit. And they were like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it's torn up, you know? So, you know, this time I'm coughing blood and I feel like maybe it is torn up, but again, it's, I, my throat feels way better. It's, I don't feel like I got that big hard cock in my throat anymore, right? I feel like it's nothing. Like I still feel something there, but it's not like before. So I'm still coughing blood and I'm like, yeah, I think I'm going to have to go to the doctor and I go to work. I'm like, you know what? Whatever. So I get to work. The walk from the train station to my job was actually harder than the walk from my apartment to Fordham Road, the train station. I felt like I was going to faint and I, I get to work, right? A supervisor comes up to me. She's like, 
Yo, are you okay? And I'm sweating. I take I take my uh, my wool coat off, right? I had this um I had a blue button up shirt. I I won't forget that. I had a blue button up shirt, right? That shit looked navy blue, bro, when I took my coat off, all right? She was like, "Oh my god." She's she's going like this. She's like, "Oh my god, are you okay?" You sure you don't want to go home? I'm like, nah, 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 nah. I can't. Because, mind you, I already lost pay for Monday and Tuesday. I don't want to lose Wednesday, Thursday. I don't, Yo, I don't got it like that, you know? I don't want to dip into savings. So I'm like, I'm like, nah, I don't, I don't get paid. I can't, I can't, I can't be off. And she's like, all right, look. If you feel like you can't do it, just let me know. And I'm like, okay, okay. So I'm at work, right? And the lights are real bright in the office. We moved from Long Island City to Manhattan. Now I'm in Manhattan. I'm on I'm on uh, 42nd on the east side. And you know, I'm, I'm, I'm in my office and it's way brighter than Long Island City in Queens. I just, I can't do it. I, ha I had to turn the brightness down on my, on my screens, right? I had to turn them shits down. This shit is so bright, I can't even look at it. So, and because the, the lights are above me, right? I'm working like this. I'm like this. With the brightness all the way down on my and the contrast too. The brightness and the contrast is all the way down. And the backlight. I had to keep going to the bathroom to cough and I keep seeing blood and I'm like, yo, I can't do this. I'm sweating. I'm still sweating like a fucking machine, bro. And then I, I go to my super bus, I'm like, yo. I gotta go. I can't be here. I, I think I I did like two hours that day. It was like 11:30. I got to work at nine. She's like, "Yo, don't come back until you feel better." She's like, "Don't worry about it. Just don't come back until you feel better." And I'm like, "She's like, you gotta check. You, you went to the doctor." I'm like, "No, I didn't." She's like, "Yo, you gotta check yourself out." And I'm sweating. I'm sweating. They're like, "Yo, why are you sweating so much?" I'm like, "I don't know. I don't know." So I I get home. You know, like around one o'clock, I got home that day. You know, I laid down on the couch and I was out. I was sleeping for hours and hours. You know, then at that point, that was when I was texting my supervisor. I was like, yo, I'm not gonna come in tomorrow. Hey, I'm not coming in tomorrow. So I called out. I didn't get paid for that Monday, that Tuesday. I got paid for two and a half hours for Wednesday. Then I got, I didn't get paid for Thursday and I didn't get paid for Friday. So I was out that whole week practically. So I only got paid half of what I normally get paid. I'm at home sleeping, and I was only eating um, mac and cheese, real cheesy. I was having a lot of um, popsicles, like the cream ones, the creamsicles. You know what I would do? You guys think that I probably love dick, but because <laughs> I'm making a lot of dick references. So I would take the popsicle, right, because it had the white popsicle, the cream one in the middle, and outside was the, the, the orange, the cherry, the strawberry. So I would take the creamsicle, and I would put it in my throat and I would deep throat it and I would spin it around. I was like this. I felt like that was the best feeling of my life. No lie. <laughs> my wife made me the most disgusting teas in the world, bro. It was like a uh, ginger tea with like lemon and garlic and onion. Yo, I think she was trying to kill Dracula. I'm being dead serious. Cause that drink was fucking disgusting. But you know, every time I drank it, I felt like a sizzle in my throat. It was crazy. And I'm like, fuck, man, shit. I, I, I ended up going to the doctor and they told me it was a viral infection and that I had a, I had a slight fever. I think I was hitting like, I was, see now when I went there, I was already feeling much better. Now if they would have probably checked me that Friday when it, when it reached its peak, you know, then at that point, maybe it would have been worse. You know, I think I, I think I was hitting like 100, like 100, 101, right? Uh, my, my body temperature. They made sure that it wasn't a bacterial infection. So they took like a sample or something like that. So that's my sick story. Let me, let me continue. Sorry, I just went on a long tangent there. Sorry about that. On a day like today, like a Saturday that my wife is at home and my son is with my, with my parents, I kind of feel drained. Like I feel like... I don't even want to do anything. You know, I want to, but I don't at the same time. I don't know, like I just feel, I feel like it's not working out. You get me? Like, oh, that's another thing. I can't really do much with the pay. You know, like I'm getting paid 18 an hour. It kind of looks like a pretty decent check, but once I start to divide it into the bills that I have to pay off, you know, I don't really have much for myself. You know, uh, it's just so much bullshit that just, 
gets in the way of motivation and that's the problem i feel where i'm at right now it's not really motivating it's just enough to get you by so my son is going to be starting school this fall he's going to be entering pre-k depending on the school that he gets into will be the outcome of the job that i'm going to be working next so i think uh i don't know like i kind of feel like i feel bad a little bit some of my co-workers are actually really cool people you know like they you know they got my back my supervisor is really cool you know anytime that i need to be off you know she allows me to have that time off you know they even said when they hired me that they're looking to keep me for at least two years yeah you know, i said yeah in the interview i said yeah yeah i got you i got you but i'm looking at the job i'm looking at my finances and it's just not working out you know what i mean like it's not I'm not working that job for people, you get me? Like, I feel bad, but at the same time, if someone were to offer those very people a higher paying job that was closer to home with better hours, then they would take it too. <laughs> you know, they wouldn't hesitate. That's what I'm trying to tell myself. I'm like, hey, you know, you're working a job, but at the same time, you're working a job for you and your family you know you're 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 working to build your life right you're working to better your life right you're not working at a job because you owe someone any favors you know like that's not how it works you know like i'm gonna be i'm gonna be working at a job getting paid the same amount for that many years no nah, i don't think that's gonna work out bro and that and that's another thing like the benefits aren't very good you know like uh if you knew where I worked, you would have, you would think I'm lying. Like I'm being dead serious. Like I, I can't believe how much they fuck their employees. Like, like, I don't know. I don't know. I, I feel like, I feel like I was, I was boasting how awesome this job was a few months ago. Right. When I updated you guys, but you know, now that I'm really deep in there, I'm like, wow, what a shitty place. You get me? Like what a piece of shit. Like, like, I would still have taken the job because I needed a job. But now that I'm looking at it, I'm like, yo, if you if you call out, you don't get fucking paid, bro. What the heck? And what's weird is that this job that I'm currently working, I don't know if you guys noticed this, but that was the first interview, the first and the last interview that I've been on. Like When I was unemployed for those six, seven months, there was a lot of jobs that did phone interviews. But in terms of like a person to person interview, that was the only interview that I went to. And I was like, yeah, I'll do it, whatever. You know, 17 an hour, which that's what I thought what the pay was in the beginning. And I was like, nah, okay, I'll do it. And the plan always was to work there six to 12 months and then leave. You know, cause I was like, I don't know how I feel about working in Manhattan or Long Island City, but you know, I need some money right now, so I'll take it. You know, I feel like you see, when I, when I was working like my first jobs in The Gap and UPS, those were my first jobs. So my first job was the summer youth program. For the summer, you're working for minimum wage. You know, most of the time you're working in a camp, like a, you're a camp counselor. When I was working that job, right, I always told myself, man, I can't wait for the summer to be over. That way I could just stop working and go somewhere else, right? I, I always felt that way. When the summer ended, they offered me a permanent position there. They said, hey, Gerson, man, we really like the way you are with kids, man. Like, uh, you, do you want to continue working here? You're going to get a raise. Instead of getting paid five fifteen, which was the minimum wage at the time, we'll pay you 7 And I'm like, now, $7 is a lot during that time. But I knew for a fact that I can get a job with a higher pay if I looked elsewhere. You know, I said, no, it's okay. Thank you, though. I really appreciate it. Then I started working in The Gap. So I started working in the store, The Gap, and I was getting paid $8.50 an hour. <laughs> when I found out I was going to get paid $8.50 an hour, I was like, holy crap, you know how many games I could buy with that money? Yo, I definitely bought mad games during that time. So it was a seasonal job initially, and after that, it converted to a permanent position. I wasn't going to take the job if they offered it to me. They said, hey, Gerson, uh, we want to extend this position as a denim specialist. I said, a denim specialist? What the fuck? We want to extend this position to you, but permanently. I was like, ah, you know what? Let me take it because my parents, you know, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't like asking them for money at this point. So I, I like the, I like the idea of me making my own money, even though I live with them. Then while I was working there outside of the season, I was like, 
I really don't want to be here anymore. And then I just quit. Then I worked as a secretary in the school that helped me get into college, right? A couple of weeks. And then they had a position open for computer consultants. It was more of an internship. I worked from, I think it was like from like, like the summer, it was from the summer to like the fall or something like that, right? Maybe a little bit past that. And I remember when I was, it was nearing the fall, I was like, man, I really can't wait to get out of this job. Then I just quit, I quit at that point. So after the computer consultant position, I started working in UPS. UPS was a seasonal job. I worked with a friend of mine, right? I worked with a friend of mine called Jason. I'm working in UPS with him and I'm like, God, I can't wait for the holidays to be over. I'm definitely not keeping this job. And they extended to me the position full time. And I said, nah, it's okay. No, thanks. And then that's when I started going to a school called Perscolis, which is a computer training program. And in that computer training program, got my A plus certification. And I started doing an internship there as a computer tech. Yeah, I worked there two days, bro. <laughs> so the first day is like a, a conveyor belt, right? It was a conveyor belt that a, a, a desktop came down, it was open already for you. The, um, it had the hard drive and it had the RAM, right? Um, so you basically take out the hard drive. They already had everything there for you. They had a stack of hard drives for you and a stack of RAM. Every desktop that came your way was the same model. Take out the hard drive, you take out the RAM, you put the new ones in. The first day ended, I think it was like around 4.30, the ship ended and I was like, I don't think I want to be a computer tech. <laughs> It's fucking horrible. So I was like, I don't think I could do this. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna come in tomorrow though. So I went in the second day right? and I'm there. Com conveyor belt, desktop, hard drive out, ram out, hard drive in, ram in, next shit. You just keep doing that for eight hours, bro. Zoom, take it out, put it in, Zzz. take it out, pull it in. Zzz. I felt like a fucking robot, bro. Also, it was like a, a dirty ass warehouse, right? And when lunch hit, I, I kid you not, this is a true story. You think I'm lying, probably. You guys are probably calling me a lie in the comment section. So, and when lunchtime hits, you hear, bzzz, like, you know that shit that it kind of looks like, um, it kind of looks like this. And it's like, it kind of lifts up. Like, it's like a flap. It goes, bzzz, and the smoke comes out when it's lunchtime, like in the movies. That's what happens when lunch hit. And then there's this, uh, there's like a, um, a walkway above you. And the guy's like, lunchtime on the speaker box. Lunchtime. I'm telling you, we were slaves there. And this old guy that he worked with me, he was like 60 something. And he was like, All right, so what you're going to eat? You're going to eat pizza? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm going to eat pizza. I'll be back. Hang on. I'll, 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 I'll see you after lunch. I fucking went home and had pizza, bro. <laughs> Yo, me that serious. I fucking left, bro. And after that is when I started working at Optimum and then we have this job that I have now. So I've always had this feeling that I'm never content with where I work, right? And when I was in Optimum, those 10 years, right, that I was working there in the call center, I never really, I hated it, but I kind of had to work there because I had my own place, right? So now that I have my own place and now that I left the shithole job Optimum, the call center, the feeling is back of not being satisfied of where I am. And I feel like it's better to jump from one job to another than stay in a hellhole, right? Well, early on at least, right? Early on, at least you can match the pay. But I don't know. So yeah, that's how I feel, guys. Um, You know, I will update you on what's gonna happen. Uh, this was a rather pointless video. <laughs> I rambled a lot, but I appreciate everyone listening in. Sorry I didn't get to eat very much. I do have to pick up my wife from school though. But thank you guys for listening uh, to me complaining about my blessings, I guess, right? Guys, thank you. I appreciate it. Be sure to follow me on Twitter. Uh, be sure to comment below and tell me what your worst job was. Or have you decided to just say fuck it and just not care anymore? Because some people can work a shitty job and not care. I wish I could do that now. Like, maybe I was scarred with my last job that I don't want to go through that again. All right, guys. Catch you later. Peace.